Hey guys, Kev here, and it's time for my full review on the Chavez Knives Sangre. So this is a really crazy one because I honestly expected to hate this knife. Um, I've owned two now, ironically. Uh, there's a pretty big issue with both. Uh, well, there's a few big issues, honestly. Yet, I love this knife. This is a fantastic knife. Uh, it's possibly the best Chavez I've owned. Um, maybe the 229 would beat it. Um, just out of sheer badassery and everything. But personally, I think I like this one better. Uh, Size-wise, the way it functions a little bit better. The blade shape. So, I don't know. That'd be a dogfight. But um, this is the Blade HQ exclusive version of the Sangre. And I bought this expecting to cannibalize it. And I ended up just keeping it stock. Which is weird for me because... I spent the $335 expecting to take it apart and take the blade off and swap the, the lock side. And I'll get into all that. But I just really, really like this uh, specific build as is. So I kind of just stuck with it. Um, so this is from Blade HQ. Shout out to them. That does not happen very often on this channel. I'm going to get a sip of my raspberry lime. Spin drift. So, yeah, I don't order from Blade HQ very often for a couple reasons. One, they have a lot of the mainstream stuff that I'm not going to buy anyway. I don't really get that stuff. And if I do get it, I usually get it from my boy Justin over at White Mountain Knives. Because he's a great dude. He has really good pricing. He has discount codes. He has free shipping, you know. There's no reason to hit up Blade HQ when I can get 10% off or whatever. Free shipping in the U.S. and already a probably better price. Plus it gets shipped instantly and it's from a great guy. Uh, Blade HQ charges tax usually. They charge shipping. Uh, they take forever to ship. You know, the price is as high as you could possibly set the price without somebody saying you're gouging, right? It's always like that with them. Excuse me. Knife Center is the same way. I, we all start our knife journey ordering from Blade HQ, Knife Center, places like that. And then we kind of learn, right? And, and we still order from them when we need to because they get things sometimes you can't get anywhere else or they have stock or whatever. Um, and I get it, right? But I feel like most people, and you guys can tell me in the comments how wrong I am or right I am. But I would venture to guess that a lot of the people watching my channel right now are either newer to the hobby, and they do order from Blade HQ a good bit, uh, Knife Center, whatever, or they've been in the hobby a while, and they've kind of gone through that phase where they will order from Blade HQ when they have to for convenience sake, but it's not like they're, it's not their preferred dealer, right? Um... Yeah, I think I had another... Oh, another point would be I used to order from them more because I would watch their YouTube videos. Um, and I really enjoyed watching Ben. And I really enjoyed watching Zach. And I kind of... I, I liked Kurt as a person. I, you know, not necessarily love the content, but really love the dude. Uh, Dallas is a great guy. I don't know if he's still there. They, they seem to go through uh, YouTube personalities really fast. So I think their marketing team doesn't get paid very well, is my theory. Um, which seems to be a theme in the knife world. But anyway, uh, you guys want to talk about the Sangre or Blade HQ? So uh, this is an exclusive to Blade HQ, which is why I picked it up. It was $335 from Blade HQ. Um, uh, which, you know, that's a lot of money. It's a Riot made knife. Uh, but I think these were always around 320 or so. So, uh, the price is fine, but then you tack on shipping and all that. And then it took two, two and a half days before it ever actually shipped and which is better than it used to be. Right. Um, 
So, anyway, it is a uh, micarta scale. I don't know what the micarta is. It, to me, feels different than anything I've seen from Riot. Usually, they use the brown, the green, and the black canvas shit, right? This is not that. This is something else. Um, it's some kind of a tan micarta, and I love it. Um, now, it's not, like, soft. It's pretty stiff, but it has a really good feel to it. I love this micarta. It's on record, in case you're curious. Again, I, I love it. Um, but I really like this micarta. Um, and then it has a uh, PBD or DLC uh, lock side, screws, hardware, all of that. And, of course, the blade is also PBD. It is in M390 steel, of course. And uh, it's a flat grind, which is odd to me on this knife. But it does work out, actually. So we'll talk about that in cutting, I guess. But... Uh, for the exclusive stuff, it's, you know, blacked out with a micarta show side. They also have one with, I believe, JG10 that's blacked out. And then I think they had the normal versions in just, you know, black G10 and titanium. Um, I also bought a version from White Mountain Knives of the black G10 one with raw tie, right? And the satin blade. And my plan was, when I saw this, I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy that, and then I'm going to take the satin blade, and I'm going to put it on this lock side. You know, so I'll keep the satin blade, and I'll keep the black G10, but I'll take the uh, black frame, and then I was going to decide on the hardware if I wanted to go satin or black. And I was going to kind of Franken a Chavez together, and then sell the other remnants, which would, I guess, have been my Carta with plain tie and a black blade. Um, but when I opened this, I don't know, something just spoke to me. I really like the overall aesthetic of this it's exclusive. I think it looks fantastic. Um, normally, I'm not a coated blade guy. If I go coated, I always try to go black wash. Um, which to me is different. Obviously, it's different, but um, this is, you know, it kind of looks more painted on. It's that PVD DLC, and this is like this, but then stonewashed, and it to me is just way better. You see the definition in these lines, and it's got that tumbled look, and it, I don't know, it's just better, but something about this knife, you know, there's just some knives that have a badassery to them, and I'm actually carrying another one today. There's some knives that just have a badassery to them. And we accept certain things. Uh, Something Obscene Company is another one. I have a mini J-Cape coming. Can't promise I'll like that knife because of the size. But the J-Cape is awesome, right? And you overlook things like the stupid lightning bolt clip, you know? Uh, in this case, I love the Chavez clip. But a lot of people don't. Um, this is just a menacing tactical beast, right? The gripper, which a uh, spoiler alert reviews come in. This thing is phenomenal guys. This thing, I liked it out of the box. I liked the prototype. I love, love, love this knife now. Um, so there's some knives where you're just like, you know what? It's not from like, it's not my style, but I love it anyway, and I'm just going to leave it as is. And that's that's why I stuck with this one, okay? So, Jesus. God, I can talk. Nine minutes in. So, this is the Chavez Sangre. Welcome to the review, folks. Size comparison, a three and a half inch blade on the Grant Gripper or Brass Brigade Gripper. You can see it is a little bit longer than the Sangre. Um, this is going to be a three and a quarter inch on the blade. I love this thing. Um, here, no, that's a bad one. Those are both uh, prototypes. Here's the Maverick S. So you can see a little bit bigger than the Maverick S. Uh, I think a good comparison is going to be the Jaeger M. 3.3, 3.4 inch blade on that. They're calling this three and a quarter, so three, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much the same. 
Honestly, it looks like the Sangre is a little bit um, bigger. So there's your size comparisons. Uh, it is on bearings. I have this on skiff bearings. We'll get into that. And uh, yeah, it's a Warney flat grind and all that goodness. So ergonomics. Uh, again, I should hate this, right? That's what I always say about Chavez knives. I should hate the ergonomics. Um, and I kind of do, but this is really comfortable. I've gotten over the choil. So you guys know it's a point of contention for me where I'm like, I want to use it. Right. And on the liberation, I did use it because it was bigger. It was big enough to fit your finger. This you're going to cut yourself if you try to use this. And I did on the first one I had, which by the way, that first one in black G10, I sold to the homie backpack B on a discount so he's gonna mod it and sell it or whatever he's gonna do uh, but that's where that one went there was no point in keeping both once i decided to keep this one um this grip right here in my large glove size hand is just really good guys now um uh, the issue with chavez is always the corners right they're always freaking sharp ass corners and this is no exception now i will say another reason i wanted to keep the micarta is because it's softer and I, I will say, in the palm, it does feel better than the G10 did. The G10 was a little pokier. This is pokey, but that was pokier. It's just a little softer because it's my Carta, right? Uh, uh, the 229, which is a lot bigger, it's a 3.6 inch blade, bigger handle, is too big for me, right? Uh, not too big, but it's, you know, this fits my hand. The 229 is a little bit big, right? Now, the thing with that, I always say, is when I held the 229, I'd have some sticking out, right? And that was good because what was sticking out were these sharp-ass corners. Where on this knife, it fits my hand perfectly. But that means I get these corners into my palm and I feel them. And if I was going to do any kind of hard use, which I don't, it would hurt. It would eventually fatigue and it would hurt. But luckily, we don't have to worry about that, right? Um, so, you know, the ergos are... are acceptable like if you don't count the sharp corners it's very comfortable the the choil the way everything swells it fits the hand really well you land on this spine right here which note something very interesting no jimping that was the same with the liberation flipper no jimping it's super comfortable with this pretty thick spine uh and no jimping really locked in i really enjoy it guys uh, you can get into a pinch grip and you do kind of utilize this sort of faux choil right here and i kind of pinch it like this and then i have uh my exacto tip and i can zip zap zip uh shipping labels getting into packages guys it's a dream it's one of the reasons i love this knife so ergos are good cutting that's what we were just talking about this flat grind so Earlier, I was like, oh, I wish it was a hollow. And I do still, you know, because I just love a hollow grind. Like, you know, check out the uh, gripper here with the hollow grind. Like, just imagine. You know, it would just be badass, right? Uh, but they didn't do it. And I think that's because they wanted to keep the tip as strong as possible. I think it was out of sheer uh, worry that they would not be able to grind this tip without doing a flat grind if they had done a hollow grind i could literally just snap this tip off i think um, i mean look at that i mean you can look at it on the gripper that's thick stock thicker stock than on the chavez and you can see the taper and you can see how it comes down and that hollow grind all the way out to here i mean it is you know i could probably bend that pretty easy uh it's not bad because they use thicker stock this isn't quite that thick um so i just think that was why they did it it was so you'd still have a sturdy tip because from here out a hollow grind would have been dangerous you know what i mean and for what you're going to use this knife for uh the flat grind is enough it comes down to a thin enough edge it cuts through paper and other material just fine i mean it's super sharp you know i'm doing the s cuts and whatnot like i i really don't think a hollow grind was necessary would i have liked it of course you know 
but it's not the end of the world and it does add a little bit more weight to the blade so you get a little more drop action which is kind of nice right so uh the cutting is wonderful guys that tip is fantastic that pinch grip climb up to right here get that perfect just oh, man shipping label destroyer guys really fun to cut into packages cardboard all the stuff that i do with a knife right uh flicky mcflickerson over here um it does really really good uh i can't speak to heavier harder use uh, i know chavez is usually about that so you know but you know you're gonna have that sort of dainty tip to worry about so you might be better off with something like the liberation or something if you're gonna uh, do work like that uh carry so it's a chavez you know, it's got the skull clip, which I love. Uh, it's very tight. You know how they are. Getting it in pocket's always a pop. And getting it out of pocket is always a rip. Um, so, you know, of course not the best. You have a little bit sticking out, but it's not bad. Uh, I will say I was pretty impressed with the Liberation and now the Sangre in terms of weight. Um, there isn't, like, milling in there or anything, but I think just the sheer size, because it's a smaller knife than the 229, and then you have the Micarta or the G10, uh, which is, you know, it's, there's no liner or anything, and I think it just lightens it up enough that, uh, it feels like a normal knife. Like, it's impressive, because most Chavez's feel obnoxiously heavy, right? And I always purposely don't get the titanium ones. As much as I think titanium looks better, I know it's going to be way too heavy and annoy the shit out of me. So I don't even try to get titanium Chavez's anymore. Um, it's really the only case where I'm like, yeah, I'll get G10. You know, um, if you go back and watch my videos, if I have a choice, I will always choose something other than G10. But on the Chavez's, you know, like the scapegoat, the 229. This, the Liberation, always go for the G10. Uh, until now, because I found out about the Micarta and I got that. Um, so, anyway, the carry's uh, pretty good. Carry's pretty good. For a Chavez, it's good, you know. Um, you do have your option of clips. Talking about carry, um, this is one of the big negatives on this knife, is the forehead screws. So, another reason I kept the black one here uh is because of it kind of hides the forehead screws so i absolutely detest that they have these swappable clips so it comes with a second clip that doesn't look like a skull for all the pussies out there who uh for some reason don't like the skull clip and still buy the knife with a skull key on it and a box that has a skull on it and made, you know, designed by a dude who's all about skulls. You still bought the knife, but you wanted your, you wanted your extra, just regular clip. Okay. Um, for all those pussies, they have that. And because of that, they stopped mounting the clip from the inside. So they used to mount it like this, couldn't see the screw and it would just mount from the inside. Well, because you have to swap the clip if you're a pussy, they had to put these stupid forehead screws in uh, because they didn't want you to have to take the knife apart because they know you're a pussy already. They're, they assume you can't take the knife apart properly. So they gave you forehead screws, which screws over the rest of us who really like the skull clip. So not only... Are you a pussy and you got your 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 milled clip that doesn't have a skull on it? Uh, you have now screwed the rest of us over because we have to look at these stupid forehead screws on our skull clip. So thank you. Really appreciate you guys. Um, yeah. I'm surprised there's no lanyard hole on here because if we're going to appease all these people, we should probably just put a lanyard hole on here too, right? Um, so that's kind of weird that there's no lanyard old. Uh, so in <laughs> being serious though, I wish they found a way to at least mount the clip like from the other side or something. So we don't have to have these stupid forehead screws. I just hate them. It ruins the goddamn clip. And it's like the J cape 
Where with the J-Cape, the lightning bolt clip, that clip I fucking hate because it functionally sucks. This looks badass and it still works just like any other clip would. The, the, the lightning bolt looks cool, but it functions like shit. I have so much trouble getting that in and out of my pocket. So I would much prefer on that knife to have the milled clip that has the little lightning bolt cut out. That makes sense to me. This forehead screw shit does not. So anyway, I'm going to shut up about it. Um, action and fidget factor, baby. So this is where, again, I probably should not like this knife. Right? This particular one has a good detent. So the one that I had before, the G10 one, I did tune a little bit. I don't think I actually did, but I attempted to just bend the lock bar in a touch. I might have. I made it a little bit stronger. Um, but this one has a excellent detent. So, I mean, you're not failing it. Once it breaks, it breaks and it pops out. Right? Um, if you flick it, flick it. It flicks really well. You know, right there. I think you can push button, but it's probably awkward. Yeah. Feels the same anyway. Um, and it comes with the standard shitty brass cage bearings. And I tried... Uh, I did a video on it. I tried swapping them to... Um, skiffs, right? And the 316th, 116th skiffs will fit the pivot so it is a 3 16th pivot but i think they were just too tight around the pivot because i didn't get like really good action out of it so i was like hey let me try five millimeter 1 16th which to me makes more sense because it's a chinese made knife five millimeter might fit better so i put those in and boom i mean look at this I mean, barely do anything. And it has broken in. I mean, it wasn't like that right after I put them in. It was good. But, I mean, as I had flipped the washers. So, as the washers had broken in and the bearings broke in. I mean, this thing is butter. Now, one of the downsides to this knife. And this was on both of the Sangres I had. So, I think it's a model-specific issue. Is the centering is just fucked. Um... It's off to the clip side by quite a margin. You can see it there. Uh, I hate showing you this with the, the blacked out blade, but I did my absolute best to tweak this guy, but you can see it's off to that side. Let's see if I can get a good angle for you. There, can you kind of see it? It's off to the clip side by a little bit. So it, it is for sure. And um, both the Sangres I had were like that. I've tried flipping bearings different ways, like the stock ones. I tried, you know, I tried all the shit I would try. Um, and, you know, I tried the paper trick and tightening everything. And, and I ended up loctiting it where it is now. And the action is absolutely incredible. And it's close enough. Like, literally, it still is off. So there's no play at all. Uh, there's no side to side, no up and down, nothing. And, I mean, you saw the action. But somehow, on this specific knife, it does not drive me nuts. There's certain, there's, like, it's, it is the weirdest thing, guys. Like, I just recently had a uh, EMP EDC Nimble X. And that had a little bit of a centering issue. I mean, literally the tiniest bit drove me insane. I ended up getting new washers from John EMPDC and it fixed it. But like, it was a whole thing for me for like, I couldn't look at it. Like it just bugged me, right? This one just does not bother me. And I think it's because if you look at the centering of the blade, and this is why I think they all have it. Because if you look at the knife, the centering of the actual blade spine is dead nuts. So, like, the tip is off to the clip side, right? 
but the actual spine is dead center between the scales. So normally when your centering is fucked up, you'll see it all the way down the spine, right? You'll see this is pushed over to this side. Now it kind of looks like it from the angle and everything I've shown you, but trust me, in real life, the centering is actually perfect on the spine of the blade, which to me is almost more important than having that tip be centered. Um, it's one of those things that visually just bugs me when I look down at the knife and I'm like, man, is it over to that side? You know, uh, and it's fine on that, on this knife. So anyway, uh, action and fidget factor, man, I'm all over the place on this one. The D10 is fantastic on this example, right? Now you have a lot of play between disengage and the detent ball there. Uh, sorry, the ramp. So you'll see all of this. All of that right there is just play. Not play, but like it's dead space essentially. Like you can't really move the knife side to side or anything, but you can move it up and down because you're in this dead space, right? It's kind of what people would call a double clutch where it doesn't break past that and then you go to shake it and it locks back up, right? Um, this has a very late detent. So if you look at it like this, that's where it's just getting to the ramp right now. Then it has to cross the ramp, and there it kind of pops off right there, and it's like halfway closed at this point, and now you can kind of shake it down, right? If you don't pass that point, you're stuck, right? So you got to get past, ugh, past it right there. That's where you're past it. See? So let me get to that point again. I'll show you. You're right there. For example, here's a random knife. This is the CMF Metalworks print prototype. Wow. It's right there. That's where the detent break is on the print. <laughs> you see the difference? It makes a big difference, man. Uh, watch. I'll get past it, and now I can shake the knife all the way close. No problem. That's insane. Here's the gripper. Let's see where this one is. This one's pretty early, too. Look at that, right there. Again, here's where it starts on the sangre. It's just, it's not good. It's not good to have it be that late. I don't know what it is about Chavez knives, but they all tend to have it. Uh, now, a lot of people don't notice on the thumb stud knives because it's on thumb studs, right? You just kind of hit the lock bar and it'll, it'll, you know, start falling until it passes the detent and then you shake it closed. But with a flipper tab, you get caught, right? It, see how it's hitting me right there and I'm not past it. So I'm going to double clutch all the time. So what I've had to learn with this knife and for some reason, again, it doesn't like drive me nuts like the centering. It's just a thing with this knife and I let it go. Uh, I kind of just push the lock bar really far. And I get as low as I can. And I've just learned to get out of the way of this thing. And occasionally I'll screw up and I'll do that. And then I have to keep pushing and getting past it. And you can see there you get stuck on it. Then you do that. It's just just the way it is with this knife but once it does pass it my god with these skips is it super smooth hydraulic close i'll call it the controlled close a lot of people like that me included a uh, little bit of shake it's very satisfying so um yeah you're gonna have that double clutch issue um another issue with the action slash fidget factor or whatever is there's no jimping on the flipper tab. The, this is just like the Liberation that I had in. Um, it's just got a little bit of a curvature, uh, but there's no jimping. And you can slip off and miss it pretty easy. Um, so, you know, I don't know why all of a sudden Chavez decided he doesn't need jimping on anywhere on the knife. When he used to put it, like, harsh jimping. I don't, it's weird to me, but uh, whatever. Whatever. It's unique. It's, you know, there's just something about the knife um, that these major red flags just don't piss me off for some reason. Uh, so, in conclusion, compared to the Liberation, which I had in, the Tanto version, 
I do prefer the Sangre because of the blade shape. Now, I prefer the Liberation Choil because you can actually use it. And yes, it would be sick if this had the Choil big enough. Like, I wouldn't mind losing this much blade to have a full Choil. It would be even better. But I've gotten used to just holding it. It's fine in this grip or a pinch grip, right? Um, the action's good despite some issues, late detent and all that. But, I mean, whew. Uh, I do wish the centering was dialed in. Uh, that would be nice if it was, you know, for $335 from Riot. I kind of want my knife to be perfectly centered all around. But, hey, um, it does work fine and all of that. Uh, and then the, the forehead screws, man. Just come on. Just stop it. Just, get, just go back to the old way, please. Uh, or add a lanyard hole. <laughs> just give in all the way to the pussies. Or bring back the normal clip um and lastly it has some sharp corners you know uh but we all know that already uh but all in all this is uh, a fantastic knife i truly truly love the chavez sangre and it's weird that i do i feel like it's just got a lot of things i normally hate on but I love it. I do. Um, is it going to be like a long-term, never trade, sell it kind of knife? I don't think so. I mean, I could see, you know, it ending up in a trade or me selling it if I need cash or something. I'm not thinking about that right now. I, I really like this knife. Like, I've enjoyed the shit out of it. I really like carrying it. I really like using it. Um, it's a very good user for me. Uh, and I like the action. It's fun. And you know what? It looks badass. And that's a big plus, you know? And I love this micarta. I just... I don't know. It's cool micarta. So, uh, Blade HQ done good here. Chavez done good. Uh, overall, Riot did pretty damn good. Minus that centering issue. So... That is the Chavez Knives Sangre full review. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Is this knife for you? Um, are you a pussy? Do you swap the clip out? And uh, are you the reason I have forehead screws? Because <laughs> eh, I'm just kidding. But I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Truly. And uh, I will catch you later.